<clears throat> Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Diane Marie. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. And um, I have got a really neat card to share with you today. I want to show you how I made it. Now, this is the first one I ever did, so it's a little rough looking, maybe not, I don't know. Um, so it's a little off center, so I am probably like my worst critic. <laughs> so it's a waterfall card, just like that. And, um, and then it just opens up like a regular card, like so. Pardon me one minute. <coughs> So I'm still trying to get rid of this little cold. Um, and then I decorated the envelope. And you just put that extra piece that I cut off this designer series paper and I just decorated the flap. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to still get rid of this little bit of a cough still. I don't know, it's just taking me a lot longer to get rid of it, but I am better. I'm not coughing as much and so it's getting there. And then you just kind of tuck that down there like that behind the card. And then you can just put that right inside and send it out. And it fits nicely right inside of a regular envelope or an A2 envelope. So I'm going to sit this over here. Um, so this is the one that I will be showing you how to make today. It is the stamp set called Happy Hedgehogs. And I, the reason I use this set, well, one, I haven't played with it much, and I just started playing with it a little bit. And plus, the images, I'm going to be using the bird, the two hedgehogs, the little mushroom, and that little butterfly. And I think it's this sentiment here that I will be using. So just about all of the stamps in this set. And, they, and the image actually fits really good on these um, pieces of cardstock that I have cut out, and they fit nicely. So that set just kind of, you know, worked out better for this particular project. And it does come with a matching punch. I'm just not going to use that matching punch today. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I, how I made this. And... I came across this. I'm not sure where I came across this from. Maybe it was Pinterest or YouTube. I'm not sure. I am on Pinterest a lot to get inspiration for, you know, all the card projects and whatnot. And, you know, there's other things you can look at, too. You know, you got your Google and your Facebook and whatnot. Isn't that the neatest thing? I just can't stop playing with it. It's so neat. So, uh... It was another lady that did this, and I um, and I was like, I don't know if I can make this or not because it does look like it's a little, it looks hard, but it's not hard actually. It's it's a lot easier than what it looks. So yeah, so I'm gonna get started on this card today, and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. It helps my channel a lot. And that way you get notified of a new video being posted. Um, so I have got a piece of very vanilla card base. It's thick, very vanilla. I've already cut it to five and a half by eight and a half. Then I scored it at four and a quarter and I've already folded that over. Okay, and then I'm just going to sit this over to the side for now. Now, with this piece, this is the free celebration uh, designer series paper that is actually free after a $50 order. And it is in this little uh, mini brochure here. And it's this paper right here. Um, you can, It's like double-sided. So, I chose those little green hearts because I thought it was just... It was really cute, and I thought it went well with the little hedgehogs. So, before I started making the video, I decided to go ahead and measure this from the bottom. I'm using my grid paper. I love my grid paper. It's, it's, it's very helpful 
because you have measurements on the side and you have measurements down here. So what I did is I took and measured it at one and a quarter, which is right about here. And then I took a little pencil mark and I just kind of put a little bit of a, a little bit of a mark, a little bit of a, um, you know, a little mark there just to give me an idea of where I need to um, put that strip on. So I'm gonna sit this over here for now and I'm gonna go ahead and get started on this project. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share um, these pieces as I go along and I am gonna do a blog post so that way you can refer back to the measurements if you want to come and recreate this card, which, <coughs> which is not, extremely hard it's really easy um so this is cut at two by nine this is also very vanilla but this is just regular very vanilla it's not the thick card base so the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to take this punch it is i'm trying to remember the name of this punch we have so many punches it's so hard to remember them all it is a tag punch i'm thinking it's a fancy tag punch so you're gonna to wanna to take that and you're gonna to wanna to do that first. So you just put that in there and you just kinda of put that in there and you just measure it up, making sure that it's fairly even on both sides. And you're just gonna give that a good punch and there is a start of your pull tab. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna bring out your uh, trimmer, which has a score blade on it. I can't remember if I need to, um, no, I don't think I need to, it, looking at my notes, I do not need to extend this arm. So you're going to want this over here. I think it's, yeah, so you're going to want this piece over here, off to the side. So the first score mark you're going to make is two inches. Okay, and then two and three fourths, three and a half, all easy measurements, they're all even, and then four and a quarter. Okay, and that's all the measurements you're going to need for this uh, pull tab. So I am going to show you a little trick. I don't know if I'd say trick, just when you go to do this, you're gonna wanna pull this down and then take your bone folder and just kinda fold and give a nice crisp crease. I'm gonna get a drink of water just cause my throat's getting a little dry. When I talk more, my throat starts getting a little dry. So, um. When you go to do this, you gotta make sure, and you're, when you go to put these on, these little images, you're gonna be putting them on backwards. I don't know if that makes any sense, or, but I will show you um, what I mean by that. Because when you go to pull this, you want whatever image you want up at the top, you're gonna put it on backwards. So if you want your hedgehog you want one of your hedgehogs to be the first one. When you go to put this on, you're going to put it on backwards like, like this. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And then when you go to pull this down, you got to make sure you do your sentiment first. Okay? So let me go ahead and show you how I did all that. Now, this is going to come right about there. So I do need this uh, stamp and pierce mat. Eventually, I will need this, but I think for the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to stamp your sentiment. Now I have all my stamps on my block and the sentiment that I am using is finding a friend is the best discovery of all. So that is the first thing you're gonna wanna do and I've got the basic block ink, okay? And you're gonna want to stamp this kind of up here. 
closer to the top of this pull tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink that up. And I'm gonna bring this just a little bit closer to me. And then I am just, and, and you want to make sure when you stamp it, you don't stamp it over here. Um, I just gotta make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah, I'm doing it right. So you just ink that up, making sure I get enough black ink there. And you're just gonna wanna stamp that right about here. And I'm going to put it kind of over on the, um, a little bit closer over towards the left side. Like that. Because I want to add my little butterfly. Because I have a little butterfly on there. So I'm just going to ink the little butterfly up in the basic black. And then I'm just going to put the little butterfly mm, kind of over here is where I had it on the other one. So that's kind of what you want to do first. <coughs> so, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sit this. I am going to go ahead and fold this, though. So it's going to be like that. And then one... And then like that, and then like that, okay? Just like that. I think I'm doing this right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to sit this over here for the moment while I bring in my Stampin' Pierce mat because... I have got to stamp my images on these four pieces of basic white uh, cardstock, and I've cut those at one and three fourths by one and three fourths, and I've cut four of them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stamp my hedgehog. Okay, I'm going to stamp him right about here and see how he fits just real nicely right inside that um, first piece there. Because it, this is the right size for this. And then I have another hedgehog. What did I do? Oh, there he is. So here's the smaller hedgehog. So whenever you're using these photopolymer stamps, you're gonna want a Stampin' Pierce mat. So you have some, um, like you need to have something to push down on because the image won't come out as good. So, and then like sometimes when you use a Stamparatus, the Stamparatus has those foam mats and that's kind of the same thing. Because if you try to stamp this without it, let me show you what will happen. You don't get a very good image. See, it's not really that great. So when you have this stamp and pierce mat, you get a better uh, you get a better coverage of your image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp him right about here. Okay, so I've got those two done. Um, I'm just going to set my little hedgehog stamps over here off the side because I have a chamois over there that I use to clean. So I'm going to take my little mushroom I have here and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to stamp all my images on these little pieces of cardstock. And the last one is my little bird. So I'm going to stamp my little bird. So just like that. So yeah, celebration I think will end in maybe a couple of months. So if um, you want to get some of those free items, it's now is a good time because um, plus I have free shipping all through the uh, month of February as well. So I would reimburse you for your free for your shipping. I would send you money through PayPal. 
And not only would you get free shipping, but you'd get a free gift from me, plus you would get free items from Celebration. So it's a really good deal. Uh, not only from me as far as free shipping, but you would also get um, a free Celebration item plus another free item from me if it's $50 or more. I know sometimes it's hard to... Uh, I know everybody's on a budget, and we're all trying to, you know, budget our money and everything. And so, it's understandable. <laughs> but I think the next time Stampin' Up! will be doing a celebration would be in the summer. So, um, and if it's something that, you know, if you're thinking that... You know, you want to join Stampin' Up! and get a discount, you can always just uh, let me know, and um, I'll be happy to help you out with that. And then that way you can get that 20% discount. And right now, when you join, not only do you get an extra $25 free in product, uh, you get two free extra stamp sets on top of that. So it's $99 to start for the starter kit, but then you get $25 for free of product. I think I might have not said that right when I did the video last time. So anyway, um, so the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to color in your uh, images. So I have some Stampin' Blends, and so what I would... And so what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to color all of them because I already have some colored before the video, but I'm going to show you kind of what I did with each one. So I have a Stampin' Blend uh, combo, which is the crumb cake. I have a dark and a light crumb cake. So I kind of went around the hedgehogs. So let me get these two kind of sitting out away. So since this bleeds through, I'm going to see if I can find some scrap paper somewhere. Uh, where is some scrap paper? I should have some scrap paper nearby. Mm. I'll just use this. This is this will work. Here's some scrap paper. It's just. So I am using the um, the fine tip side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go over it a little bit with the dark crumb cake a little bit. And I always give it a, a, a second or two for it to set a little bit. Uh, you could do it this way. It might be a little bit easier. Uh, it just depends... Now I'm using a little brush tip because um, I'm just kind of going around it, kind of like an outline kind of thing. Um, I love to color. This is probably one of the most favorite thing um, I enjoy when it comes to making cards because um, it's so relaxing. I enjoy coloring so much. I can sit here for hours and just color. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things where you can sit and relax. And so anyway, you get the idea of kind of what to do there. Um, you don't have to use crumb cake. Um, you could use light crumb. I mean, you could use maybe soft suede or, you know, you know, anything like that. So, I actually have a couple of new things to share today. Well, just one thing, actually. So, you know, you let that sit a minute, and then um, you can come back in and use your light crumb cake. So you just kind of go around like so. And for me, I like to have a little bit of an outline. So it's kind of like when I was a little girl and I was coloring my coloring books, I like to always have an outline. So you just kind of do, you know, this sort of thing. And then you can come back in and, and use some other blends. So yeah, 
It's a lot of fun doing this. It's it's one of my stress-free, get away from reality kind of thing. <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when everybody's gone and they've left the house for the day, I'll come in here and, and uh, I don't know. I just come in here and I do my thing. I enjoy my little crafting. And then this is the light crumb cake. And I'm just coming back in. I'm pulling that dark into, I think this is the light. Yeah, this is the light one. I'm just kind of pulling this dark crumb cake into, um, into where his fur, I guess it's fur. I don't know if hedgehogs have the, I don't know if it's fur or or what it is. I know it's not porcupine. Porcupine is not fur. So anyway, you just kind of come in and you just kind of blend that in with your with your uh, light crumb cake and just you get the idea with that. And then make sure you get his little legs right there. Um, yeah, so and then you can just do this. We have some new stamping blends um, that just came out, and I think they're available for the customers to order from now. Um, they actually are supposed to be skin tone colors, but I don't think I will be using them for the skin tone colors <laughs> just because, um, I don't know, I just, I think I like just, you know, I like using the light petal pink for the skin tones. And then we have an ivory. Where's the ivory? Yeah, I used a ivory, ivory one for the, um, for like the, the face and the hands. And I'd rather use those. That's just me. But, um, you know, I'm just not, I'm just different. I don't like to use... The stamping, the new stamping blends for what they wanted us to use them for. But anyway, you get the idea of that. And I've already colored two of them. And so I'm going to show you the two that I did. So that way I don't really, you know, put too much time. And what I did with these is these um, blends right here are the new blends. And they are, let's see if I can find it. I think it's this one. Yeah, so we have new blends. One is, this is called 700, and they're supposed to be for skin tones. This is, um, this is a 1000. So these are all the new blends that we have. I put them in this bag to kind of separate them from the others. Just because uh, there's really no name on them. There's just numbers on them. So anyway, that's the new blends that we have. And I like using them for other images so that's kind of what i'm using on this hedgehog i kind of used a different blend for him i think i used this one let's see let me see if that's the one i used but i think it is let's see yeah i just used that is it no this one's the dark one i think it's the other one i used let's see yeah, this is the one I used for his face and his body because it's a little bit lighter. So that's kind of what I did with this one. And then I just went back in with a, um, uh, I came back in and I used this color lifter just to pull some of that off. I don't want a lot of that on his body or his face. So you can always pull the color off of there if you don't want it. So to me, I feel like that's just a little bit too much, but I want it light. So that's kind of what I did with this. And so that's that one. And then I did color these two in. And I think with the mushroom, I did... I did Flirty Flamingo, which is, I think, the Dark Flirty Flamingo. I came in and did it right here. Or is that the light one? Oh, I think I used the light one, not that one. But, yeah, I just came in with the light, uh, 
Flirty Flamingo and just did this little part of the mushroom. And I think I used, that's not the one I used for the top of the mushroom. Maybe it's this one that I did with the mushroom. No, that's not it. I can't remember which one I used for the mushroom. For the top of it, I can't remember. But anyway, the ivory I used for this part. I'm trying to find that color that I used for that one. I'm not finding it. Huh. Oh, I think I used light pink. Maybe that's what I used. Yeah, I think that's the one I used. It's the light pink. So I just come in and I just did this with the light pink. Yeah, that's the one I used. And then I just kind of went in and did that. And I think I used this one for the little uh, circles here, for the little dots. I just kind of put a little dark ones in there like that. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, and then did I do this for the... For this one right here, I did that. And this is a new blend. This is another new blend. So yeah, I kind of like that. And then I came in with the light granny apple and I colored in the grass underneath here a little bit. And then I came back in with the dark granny apple and just kind of gave it a little bit, um, you know, the, the little part of the grass that's kind of sticking up there. I just kind of brought back in the dark just to highlight it a little bit. There, see? And then with the bird, um, what I did with the bird was... I'm trying to find uh, so the bird I came in with um, so I did the flirty flamingo for the flower I think I did the oh wait a minute so I came in with the light flirty flamingo and I colored in the flower like so and then I used the dark one to do just the tops of it with the little brush tip. And I just kind of gave it a little, a little tint, a little highlight of the, of the flower there, like that. And then I did light granny apple for the leaf. And then I have a pumpkin pie Stampin' Right marker that I used for his little beak. So they didn't use that in. I used the like the writing one just because it's so tiny. It's really tiny right there. So I thought that would work better. And then I have the pool party. I have a light and a dark pool party. I came in with the light pool party. And I just kind of went around it like so. And then I came in with the dark and I just kind of went around it a little bit more. And then all in all, I ended up with this little, this little guy. So I had already colored all these in. I'm trying to find my little mushroom that I colored. So I have the mushroom, the little hedgehog, the other little hedgehog, and then I have the um, bird. So let me show you how I put all this together real quick. I'm trying to put my, there. So what you're gonna wanna do is, I'm gonna take this out of here now and get my, adhesive sheet that I like so much and then you're going to want to put these and layer them to this. I'm just looking for my adhesive. Here we go. So I got some stamp and seal and I'm just going to add all these 
to this layer of pear pizzazz cardstock, and these are cut for these two by two. And I'm just gonna roll that. I'm just gonna add adhesive to all of them. And like so. And then you're just gonna center that in there. And you're just gonna do all four like that. Now this might actually be my last interactive card for a little while. I think I'm gonna get back to doing some basics starting next week. Um, so I can kind of show you some uh, card techniques. Uh, maybe just kind of show you some different things you can do, uh, like you can make different card sketches, designs. I made one earlier and it was with the flaring rain boots. I don't know if anyone's seen that stamp set in the mini catalog. Uh, I've been working with that one as well. I really do like that stamp set. I love the, um, the versatility of it. So what you wanna do is, you're gonna wanna do this backwards. So it sounds silly, but you're gonna want to Start with your first image. Looking at this card here, the way I did it, so you're gonna want to put this down here and making sure that this is going to kind of be right about there, because you're gonna pull this. But before I put them on there, I need to do my ribbon. And I'm looking for my ribbon. So I'm actually gonna use this black ribbon right here, because this is probably easier to work with right now on today's project. So I'm gonna cut some off. So probably about six inches is what you're gonna want to have. Cause you're gonna double this up and it's just easier to do it this way because that way it doesn't put too much uh, pressure or too much force that is. And you're just gonna like twist it up like that. Put it in your little punch hole there okay and then you're just gonna once you get it through the hole you're gonna take that little loop and then you're just gonna take the little ends of your ribbon and just pull that through like that okay I'm trying to get it to you just work with it and play with it and it should come on out of there. It should come on, there we go, see? But you wanna do it gently because you don't wanna rip that little, that little hole right there. Okay, so here's the little trick. <coughs> You're gonna wanna number these and that's kinda what the other lady did. She numbered hers. So she did like a number one, a number two, and three and four, but I'm not gonna worry about numbering them all because you'll see how, well, actually maybe I should to kind of give you an idea. So you're gonna do one, two, here's three, and here's four. So that's kind of what you wanna do. And when you go to put these on, you're not even gonna see those numbers at all. So the first one I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this Stampin' Seal Plus because it's pretty strong. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put seal, and just to give it a good little, okay, you wanna do this. And you're gonna stick that. I'm just gonna make sure I got enough on here, so I'm just gonna put a couple of more strips on that side. So this fits nicely right here. So what I'm gonna do is, I am gonna fold this like this. So the first thing you want to do is, it's hard to see it, maybe in the camera, but there is a score line right here. And you're just going to, basically, you're just going to try to match that up with that score line right there. So maybe it'd be easier if I did this. Like that. You're just going to make sure this is going to go on evenly. It's going to cover it. 
like so. I'm making sure it's on there. It's not wanting to go on there. Uh, it's sometimes you got to make sure you get it on there. You're covering the whole entire square there. Yeah, I think I got it. Yep. Okay, so there's your first one. Then you're going to want to put them on like this. Okay, so what is the next one I did? I did the bird. So let me find the bird. So now with the bird, the only thing different is you're not going to put it on this. You're going to put your adhesive right here. Okay? So you're going to want to put your adhesive. So I'm going to do it like this so it'll be easier to see. So you're going to put adhesive right on this, not this one this time. And the reason for that is because you want this to flip. So you don't want adhesive on this side or this side. You just want it up here so it'll flip. Because if you put adhesive on here like I did with the first one, it's not going to want to flip. It's just going to stick there. So then you just take this and you just kind of put it right here up at the top. Okay. And there's your start of a flip. See? See how it's going to flip? And then the next one is the number three. And let's see, I did the mushroom for that one because I want the hedgehog on the front of it and then on the very back one. So I'm using some seal again. And I'm just giving it a couple of good, um, making sure I got it on there really good. And then you're just going to put that right up here like that. I really like doing all uh, these interactive cards. They're really fun. And they're different, you know. It's something different. It's not your um, run-of-the-mill regular card. It's something different. And it's something that you can do yourself. And you, you might enjoy doing it. And then the last one is the hedgehog. And then I'm just going to put a couple of more up here up at the top. Okay. And then you're going to put this one up here at the very top. So, yeah, so you want to, whichever image you want to be the last one, you start with that one first. Okay? So, now we've got that mechanism going, that pull tab going. I'm going to show you how to get it on your card. So, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to put this on your card base. Okay? So, now we're going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and continue using the Stampin' Seal Plus. Well, now it's trying to rip the paper. It will do that sometimes. Well, you know, maybe I'll just use the liquid glue since it wants to rip the paper. I'll just do this since it's not wanting to do what I need it to do. Plus, it's a little bit stronger, so it'll hold that waterfall uh in front of the in front of the car base there so i'm just gonna measure i'm just gonna not measure i'm just gonna center this like so okay i think i got it on there pretty good that way i know it's pretty strong and it will hold this right here so the last thing you want to do is and um i don't know if you remember when i told you that you want to measure that one and a quarter right there. This is where that's going to come in and play there. So you're going to take some, if you have some tear and tape, take some tear and tape, which is pretty strong. And I suggest using that. And then you're just going to, you're just going to put some tear and tape, just a little piece here. And then you're just going to rip that off with like so. And you're going to do the same thing on this side as well. Yeah, just like that. And then rip it off. Okay, that's all you're going to need to do for that. I'm just putting this stuff out the way here. And then take your take-a-pick tool and pull that off. I'm trying to pull it off. So... After you color in all your images and you can layer them to your cardstock, your coordinating col color 
cardstock. I can't get my words out. <laughs> I'm gonna sit that over there for a minute. So, this is how I got it on here fairly straight. Using my grid paper, what I did is, let me sit this over here for a minute, just so you can kind of get an idea. So, I'm looking at right here, and it's one and a quarter is where it was, um, marked at. So looking at this, I'm bringing in my ruler. It's pretty bent. Wow, I didn't know I used it so much. Wow. I have another ruler over there. Maybe I should use that one because this one's pretty bent. You can tell I've used this a lot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ruler and I'm going to lay it right up here to kind of get an idea of what line I need to kind of go by. It's actually going to go up here. Yeah, it's going to go up above that little line. So this is the line I'm looking at that I need to make sure that I'm getting it straight with this line right here. So I need to take this strip and I need to put it right up above that little mark that I made, which is gonna get covered up. Actually, I'm wrong, that is not the right line. The right line I need to make sure I get it straight with is down here. So looking at it on your grid paper, this grid paper is gonna help you out a lot because it's gonna make sure you're gonna get it straight. So there's the line I'm actually looking at right here. That's the one I need to make sure I'm lining it up straight with. Um, yeah, I think I got it fairly straight. So there we go. So there we have that part. So that's the part that you're gonna need to put on the front to hold your little mechanism. And then you're just gonna take this and you're gonna slide that down in there, like so, okay? And you're gonna make sure that you got everything fairly even, um, centered where you want. I don't know what the heck that is. Okay, so you kinda of get it where you want it at, if it looks pretty centered to you. And then once you're getting it where you want it, and you're happy with where it's at, you're gonna take your seal and you're just gonna put your seal right in the middle. But here's a little trick I wanna show you. If you're not 100% sure of yourself and you don't know exactly how far to put the adhesive, you can always take your little pencil and you can put a little mark here and here. That way, I don't know what the heck that is. Um, when you go to lay it down, it'll go right here. Okay? So, I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive right there. I'm trying to get it started because sometimes it's hard to get it started. So, one. So from there to here, and then you kind of stop right there and put another little bit right there. And then you're gonna lay this down when you're happy with where it's centered at. And kind of lay it like so. And then you're gonna place it just like that. And it's gonna hold it in place for you, okay? So then you should be able to do this. Ain't that neat? How neat is that? It was easy, wasn't it? I thought it was pretty easy. So the only other thing left to do is put some little rhinestones on the front of it. Now, if you want, you can always put a little sentiment in the middle of the, in the, yeah, in the side of your card if you want to add a little something. You can stamp a little sentiment there. So I'm just gonna add a few rhinestones to the front. And looking at this card, I think I got one here. 
I think I've got one right here. And then I think I've got another one, which is a different size. There's three different size of rhinestones here. Um, you got your little itty bitty ones, you got your middle size ones, and you got a fairly big size uh, rhinestones there. So I've used two little bitty ones, and then I'm gonna use a middle size one, I think. And I got that one kind of over, kind of like over here, I think. Or do I like it there? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure I like it there. I think I want it more over here. Hmm. Yeah, I like it right about here. There we go. So there you go. There is the pull tab waterfall card. And I sure hope you like today's project. And you just pull it and there you go. Isn't that neat? Now, if I can do it, I know you can do it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, they're both pretty much close to the same as the other one. And so, just let me know what you think. I hope you like it. Uh, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button just below. Um, if you aren't on my uh, social media page, Come on over and check me out. I'll leave all the uh, links down below the description of the uh, video. Uh, I'll put my blog link in there. All the uh, all the info that I normally put in just below my video, um, I will include all that uh, as well. So, yeah, I hope everyone has a great week. Um, I'm hoping that the next time I come to do another project. It's going to be probably not going to be an interactive card. I think I may take a break from that, but what I might do is um, just show you some other uh, card ideas that you can that you can try to do and, and use with other stamp sets. So, um, so I hope uh, everyone has a, a great week. I think I've already mentioned that. And, uh, Take care and thank you so much. Bye-bye now.